Well, the athletes are heading out onto the track then. Led out, as you can see, by Belgium for his first of three heats. Switzerland behind them. Then Spain, Italy in the blue. And Poland, the host nation, and my word, how well do they carry the baton again and again. Their lead-off runner is just 17 years old. They make sure they get plenty of experience early on. And this meeting is, to some degree, one that bloods athletes early. Gives them great experience in a big stadia, the real pressure. And all the procedures of coming into a championship like this is what they have to go through too, which is a great learning experience for so many of them. Plenty of experience here as well, though, Jenny, and this Polish squad is strong. The Polish squad is always strong in every event, but particularly this women's 4x400 four metres. The amount of titles and medals they've won over the last few years is absolutely incredible. Of course, they've already qualified for the Tokyo Olympics later in the summer, but I'm sure as hosts of this championship, they'll want to put on a great performance here. One thing I must remind you, and I might do again a couple of times over the next two days, that these are not a championships. There are no champions winning here. There are no defending champions, and there are no medals awarded. What you have is previous winners, and the winners two years ago in Yokohama were indeed Poland. A bit of a surprise that ahead of the USA and Italy. But uh, Belgium go in lane three here. They're not using the first the two inside lanes to uh, give the athletes the gentler bends, but Belgium in three, Switzerland in four, Spain in five, then Italy in six, Poland on the outside in seven. There you can see Cynthia Bolingo, a very experienced uh, Belgian lead-off athlete, 28 years old, European indoor silver medalist at 400 metres a couple of years ago. That's a best of 51.69 outdoors. She'll be passing over to Ververt, Kaukait and Laos. Lead-off athlete for Switzerland is uh, Silke Lemons, Gallego for Spain, Lucudo for Italy, Lisevitz for Poland on the outside in lane seven. Well, we had glorious weather here yesterday. It was about 17, 18 degrees and lovely sunshine over the city. But today has been gray and cloudy and uh, spits of rain here and there since we uh, got up this morning. But the stadium is a complete bowl. It really is a glorious arena, a capacity of 55,000 when it's full. It's obviously used for football as well. And it is, in fact, the national stadium even though we're uh, a couple of hundred kilometres and more from Warsaw. It's a nine-lane track, you may have noticed, just in case that is ever a format that's needed. But uh, in this first heat, five teams. The first two go through by right to tomorrow's final, with the next two fastest non-automatic qualifiers in effect going through as well. A lot to run for, of course, uh, Many of these teams have got their places booked in Tokyo already by dint of finishing in the top eight or making the final, I should say, at the World Championships two years ago in Doha. But uh, this is a major opportunity for teams who didn't make that final in Qatar to grab a place. So teams in this one who have made the uh, Olympic Games already Belgium and Poland, unsurprisingly. Bolingo with the inside line from lane three. We'll get a good view of her opponents on his first leg. So Poland's lead-off athlete then, out in lane seven, the outside lane effectively, as I said, just 17 years old. She ran the third leg for the quartet that won the European Indoor title just a few weeks ago here in Poland, in Torun, in the 4x400 metres. There is uh, Rafaela Boheng Lukudo, bronze medalist back in 2019 at the European Indoor 4x4. Has a best of uh, 52.38, although she has her on a relay split of just outside 51. Gallego of Spain, Sara Gallego, just 20 years old. All smiles, nervous. She's a good 400 meter hurdler, 56.9 400 meter hurdler. Hasn't run a great deal quicker for 400 on the flat. Silke Lemons, 21 year old leadoff athlete for Switzerland. 53.1 is her fastest ever time outdoors. That was last year. She is the Swiss indoor champion, though, this last indoor season. And Cynthia Bolingo, as we've seen already. Good athlete, three years ago, around 51.69. We'll pass over to Ververt, Kakaut and Laos. And there is a distinct advantage 
in a lane event like this to having those outside you over the uh, barriers 400 meter hurdles you're too focused on getting that stride pattern right and the barriers themselves to pay too much attention of what's going on around you but in the flat races well of course you can certainly gauge your effort by those around you and if you're uh, in lane three four in a race like this that's just about the perfect draw to uh, judge your effort according to your opponents but you still want to get the optimal optimum time out of your legs in a relay Well, Poland's Lisa Witz on the outside there to write a picture in the red shorts in lane seven. Running blind in effect, but that doesn't matter. They are very, very competent uh, carriers of the baton and one lap races generally. And she's easing away here now. Certainly looks to me like Lisa Witz of Poland's left of picture is building a lead. Although going well is Switzerland's Lemons. She has moved right up onto the shoulder of Gallego of Spain there. And uh, five is Gallego. To the right of picture is Bolingo of Belgium. She's uh, judged this well too, looking strong as the stagger unwinds in her favour. But certainly Lisa Witz here at just 17. What a raw talent she is, building up a big lead for the Poles. Don't think, of course, of course the stagger doesn't unwind until they get into the back straight, so there is a third bend to unwind just yet. But Poland certainly handing over in the lead, Jenny. Yeah, that was a great lead leg um, for the Polish athlete. And Poland has started well, haven't they? And we can see Belgium there in lane three. Actually look like they're going to take the break in the lead, which is a little bit of a surprise, but maybe we shouldn't have expected too much because Bolingo is the European indoor silver medalist. But this is a Polish athlete who's really experienced here. She's actually got the lead now, and uh, interesting to see the Polish are really mixing this relay team up. They've got abundance of riches reeling. They could almost put, you know, four of maybe ten athletes onto this leg. But, uh, yeah, stretching away now as we come to the end of the second leg. Yes, Malgorzata Holub-Kovalik for Poland leading. She is the European champion and has a four or five metre lead, and it's stretching away from Poland, from uh, Belgium now. Remember, only two teams go through by right from this in the moment. Poland and Belgium well clear of Italy in third and then Switzerland in fourth. And Spain bringing up the rear at the moment. Yes, third leg athlete here for Belgium is Pauline Kaukait. And breathing down the neck of the Polar Kinga Gaczka. Gaczka, lovely, smooth looking athlete to the left of picture there, isn't she? But she has to gauge her effort in relays. It's always so much nicer to be a meter behind somebody on their shoulder with that baton in hand and be able to attack them. You've got a target, so to speak. Italy, Italy having a good run here through Nardelli on this third leg. They come into the straight. It's been a fabulous leg from Belgium's Kalkite onto the shoulder of Gaczka of Poland. Now down the home straight and challenging the Poles. And the Italians still closing slightly. Yeah, we didn't expect this, did we? This is going to be run all the way to the wire. And, of course, you've already mentioned it, Tim. Some of these women will be running for final spots as well. The final, of course, tomorrow. So they'll be trying to register as fast a time as possible. They'll want to make sure that they're in that strike fall this time tomorrow. Into the back straight, then still Poland in command. This is Natalia Kaczmarek with uh, Belgium's Camila Laos in second place. Focused on that white vest of the host nation. The gap back to Italy has grown a little. It's about 15 metres now to the Italian anchor leg runner, Folorunzo. She's very experienced, Folorunzo, but I'm sure well, that is a gap that she won't be able to close. The time absolutely critical, so she must run hard in that blue strip of Italy. As down the home straight, Poland are again challenged by the Belgians. Laos here easing onto the shoulder of Katzmarek. Is she going to get there? I don't think so. Katzmarek stays strong, holds her form well and takes the win by a metre there. 3.28.10 from Belgium. The hosts win with Italy in third and Switzerland there just out dipping Spain. I think they had their own private little battle quite a few metres back. But Belgium booked their place in the final, hence the smiles. she might smile because that from Camila Laos was a superb final leg. She almost had the audacity there to catch Kaczmarek of uh, Poland. They are the uh, champions from two years ago, or the winners from two years ago, I should say. Of the Poles. <laughs> one of the mascots there, one of the four mascots that are 
represent the Silesian Zoo, which is just adjacent to the stadium here. That is uh, Maji, the cheetah. I'm sure we'll see the others uh, in due course. You can see in the background there, Linai, the giraffe. But here we are, this is just the final stretch now, and Laos is really going for it, isn't it? You can see the concentration, the determination on her face. She was hoping to take the win, but automatic qualification for both teams there. Here's the first changeover. Not quite as delicate a procedure, needing the precision as four by 100 meter uh, relay running. But nonetheless, every centimeter counts. Here's the second changeover between Poland's Holub. Kovaluk and Gatschka. Look at that roar from Holub Kovaluk. Gatschka coming in with Kaukite right up alongside her. That was a fabulous leg from Belgium's third leg runner, Paulin Kaukite. That was an insurmountable lead for the Italian uh, ankle leg runner, Ayomide Folorunzo. But the Poles, well, they are majestic 400 meter runners. They never look as overly strained when they're under pressure. They hold their form so well, Jenny. Yeah, I'm sure she did feel under pressure. You know, there's a lot of pressure coming into this event. I think especially for the Polish women, you know, they want to obviously win on our home territory. But uh, the Polish um, were incredible. But the Belgians, they really impressed me. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they'll shape up in the final tomorrow. Well, let's confirm that result for your season's best, of course, for Poland with 328.11. Only half a second or so ahead of Belgium, though. The Italians in third place. We'll have to wait and see if that 330.04 is good enough to get them through to tomorrow's final. So that the first of three heats, and uh, the athletes are already coming out uh, full of enthusiasm for the second of these three heats. France, Kenya, Cuba, uh, the Netherlands will be next out. And the French, well, on their day, they are superb carriers of the button. Their uh, ankle leg runner is Floria Gay, 30 years old now. But do you remember, can you cast your mind back to the European Championships in Zurich in 2014, where Gay went from fifth to first in the 4 x 400 meters relay on the final leg? And she ran an astonishing 49-7 split to uh, take gold for her nation. The uh, Netherlands, though, well, always very, very strong indeed. And what a quartet they've got. Lisander Witter and Femke Boll. Boll there to left of picture. The uh, world number one at 400 meter hurdles last year in only her second year at the event. The event, But she is European indoor champion, of course, from uh, nearby Torun here in Poland just a few weeks ago. And she took double gold as well as her nation won the 4 by 400 meters relay. I mean, that possibly is the favorite team come tomorrow's final, Jenny, that Dutch squad. Yeah, um, just looking at the women that they've chosen for the heats as well, there is other women to come into that, which will be interesting. Obviously, we're looking forward to watching the mix 4x4 as well. So some of the athletes that we think might feature tomorrow in the women's standalone 4x4 are going in that event. Um, this is the lineup here. In lane three, we've got France. In lane four, Kenya. In lane five, Cuba, and in, well, I'm going to say the outside lane, the outside of nine lanes is uh, the Netherlands. The Netherlands, of course, have already qualified for Tokyo Olympics. Yes, Kenya, I always feel are a sleeping giant in the sprint, certainly over one lap, but uh, the relatively poor facilities and coaching opportunities in uh, Kenya, not, not yet up to uh, the levels of middle and long distance running, clearly. Cuba, well, the Hechevaria, the 25-year-old who is uh, herself better known as a 400-meter hurdler, will carry the baton out of the blocks. She's run 55 seconds exactly for 400-meter hurdles. Her uh, flat best, 52.4, but that was from just a few weeks ago. The Netherlands lead of athlete is Eva Hovenkamp. Only sixth in the Dutch indoors, and that does to some degree underline the strength and depth the Dutch have got. She ran 52.83 back in 2017. That is her best. I wonder if she's been inspired to come back and run quicker by the strength of her teammates. Femke Bol, the uh, tender age of 21, must already be a real heroine to so many Dutch youngsters. France, remember, 
Mexico in three, Kenya in four, Cuba five, Netherlands in six. The Cubans, well, Hechevaria will hand over to Almansa, then Vaitia, and Gomez will be the anchor leg runner. Amandine Brossier for France goes on the first leg. They're on the inside in lane three. World Student Games uh, bronze medalist a couple of years back. She has run 51.77. That was in 2019. And actually, this indoor season, she's gone pretty well. 52.1 indoors this winter. Ava Hovenkamp then. Being introduced to the uh, stadium. The sieges are unchanged despite the absence of any crowd because of the pandemic. Zuria Hechevaria of Cuba carry the baton out for them. Gladys Muzioki, the 26-year-old semi-finalist of the Commonwealth Games back in 2018, will be the lead-off athlete for Kenya. Actually, quite a good long jumper. She's jumped 6.17 in the long jump. And then uh, Amandine Brossier of France. She will hand over to uh, Sofna Lacoste, Shana Grebo and Floria Gay. Bit of a secret weapon. Claudia Gay, as she's uh, had a good winter on that final leg. Just four teams then in this second heat. Remember, the first two go through by right to tomorrow evening's final. Long, long hold there from the starter, but they get underway. Remember the teams who have qualified already in the first heat, Poland and Belgium, who will join them. Italy's time, 3.30.04 in third place. Well, I'll tell you what, the Cuban, Almanza, has gone off incredibly quickly. Echevarria, rather, has gone off incredibly quickly and has already passed Hovenkamp, who is uh, leaving her compatriots with a little work to do. Maybe this was expected from the Dutch and hence the strong runners on the second and third legs. Remember, they got Lisanne, Lisanne de Witte on the third leg and Femke Boll on the fourth leg. But this is a fabulous opening leg from Zurian Hekevarria of Cuba. Beginning to struggle a little bit in the closing meters there as she hands over to Almanza. But the Cubans head off with a comfortable lead on this uh, second leg, with uh, in third place at the moment behind the Netherlands, uh, Kenya. Yeah, Almanza's got a commanding lead there, hasn't she? An 800 meter specialist. She actually got a personal best dating back to 2015 of 157.70, which is sheer world class. And we can just see she looked up there. We've got a screen just at around about 150 meters to go. So the athletes can just have a little glance, see where the teams are behind her. But I can tell her they're around about 10 to 15 meters. Cuba have got such a commanding lead at this point. France, of course, now coming into second place. Again, surprising to overtake the Netherlands team. Lacoste, the French champion from last year, running Almanza down now. Yes, Almanza there just being run down. She held her form pretty well, but uh, Lacoste ran a fabulous second leg there for France. And uh, for France on this one, Grebo, Shana Grebo is chasing Lisnady Vetia of uh, Cuba. Still out in front, the Netherlands. Well, they've got a bit of work to do at the moment. That's about a 15-metre gap back in third place up to France in second, who are being uh, chasing hard, and Cuba are being caught here, I think. Cuba's Lisnady Vetia with 200 to run as Grebo virtually breathing down her neck. Yeah, Grebo here, the 400-metre hurdle specialist. We know hurdle specialists are always going to come home strong, and it actually looks like the Cuban athlete has just saved a little bit. Really sensible run here to make sure she comes home fresh. And I'm just watching here, Leanne Dis Diswit really chasing down the French athlete who's really holding on and won't wait to um, be able to hand that baton over. Really good running there, finishing strength from Vetia of Cuba to give them a good lead going into this final leg now. What can the secret weapon of Femke Boll and the Netherlands do here? I say secret weapon, not very secret, but she's got a 15-metre gap to make up. 
France in third place with Floria Gay on this final leg. Can she latch onto the coattails of Femke Ball in that orange of the Netherlands? Looking very smooth indeed, Ball. I know she knows she's only got to get into the first two to make it into the final. Maybe trying to keep a little bit of powder dry here for something special tomorrow. As Cuba come into the straight, 100 to run. Is she going to hang on here, though, Roxana Gomez, for Cuba? Closing with every stride is Femke Ball, the 21-year-old former judo player. And uh, I don't think she's going to have enough tracks. She's going to run out of tracks, catch Cuba. It is Cuba and the Netherlands. With France back in third place, about 20 metres back. The winning time, 3.27.92. And that is uh, about three tenths of a second quicker than Poland in the first heat. That's a very impressive performance from that Cuban quartet. My word, did Vetia run well to hold that lead and give Gomez a real fighting chance and in fact Jenny I think possibly Boll realized there was such a big gap up to the the leader when she took the baton on that final leg it really wasn't worth trying to bust a gut to get back to her so to speak what I am finding more impressive is that these women can still dance and celebrate after running a 400 meters each and they compose as well which is great um, really great performance from them and uh, we should have expected it you know if you actually look at the individual athletes they've got great personal best they've obviously never put it together as a squad before but I think you're right Tim um, the way Femke Ball runs she's very relaxed and she's quite deceptive she doesn't look like she's actually traveling that quickly um, it's just a long floating stride but looking at her face the last 50 meters I think she knew that she'd done enough and she's going to be busy here this weekend um, she may well run in the mix four by four as well um, and especially the final of this event which the Netherlands would fancy themselves as maybe taking the victory going all the way to line with the Polish but the Cubans they've uh, thrown that into the mix haven't they they have indeed, yes. Femke Ball, well, she looks relaxed at that speed because she is six foot tall, one meter 83. Let's confirm that result for you. And it was indeed Cuba who just kept the Netherlands at bay in this qualifying race, at least. So they go through by right, those first two teams, Cuba and the Netherlands. France with 3.30, 46, are a little bit slower than Italy, who were third in the first heat, but they are quicker than uh, Switzerland, who were fourth. So Switzerland definitely will not make it through to the final. Kenya bring up the rear with 339.34 there. Well, let's have a look at the athletes uh, in this third and final heat of this opening discipline, the women's 4x400 meters relay. Japan coming up first, Mayu Kobayashi will be their lead-off athlete. Botswana behind them. Then Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Very experienced squad that for the British. Chile's uh, quartet lead out the uh, final team out. Germany with Nadina Gonska, their uh, lead-off athlete. be glad to uh, get out on the track and have a stride out these athletes the warm-up track is just outside the stadium of course over the back straight and the athletes all got to feel this track yesterday there was a, a real pack of them through the middle of the day yesterday practicing their uh, baton exchanges more than anything else of course that can be the uh, achilles heel for so many squads jenny Yes, it can, and I think this is great opportunity as well for all the athletes to come together as a team, because there's nothing that you ever really do in the sport as a team. So to have a whole competition just focusing on the relays, I think they'll all have really enjoyed it. And, you know, the feedback that we've had over the years is everyone wants to be at this event. No, Jenny, when I, was, when I was racing about 100 years ago, I used to feel so much more relaxed in cross-country and road racing than track racing. Did you feel that same contrast between running an individual 400s and 800s and running with a baton in your hand? Is it, is it a little bit less formal, less pressure? I would enjoy it more, definitely, being part of a team. But actually, I the, maybe it's my characteristics, I wouldn't want to let anyone down. So I used to get a little bit more nervous, if anything. But uh, I was such a better 4x400 four metre runner than individual 400 runner. So, yeah, maybe I should have carried a baton all the time. <laughs> I think uh, some people undergo a, a massive change, don't, almost a schizophrenic change. When they get a baton in their hands, they're different animals. There were many great athletes back in my day who were so much better, so much more competitive and able with a baton in their hands than, than running individually. 
I think it's just the adrenaline, you know, sometimes you, you see your teammates go off and your heart rate gets elevated and you just don't want to let the side down. And uh, I'm sure all these athletes here this weekend will feel the same. But uh, I loved seeing those opening images of everyone just enjoying it. It's, it's a celebration event. And uh, yes, of course, there's qualification places up for grabs as well. But uh, yeah, just such a great atmosphere to be part of. And a little bit jealous that it didn't um, happen when I was an athlete. I was always envious of uh, the relay runners at championships as well. Another opportunity to earn a medal when it comes to major championships. Let's have a look at the lineup stuff. So this third and uh, final heat Japan, Botswana, Great Britain, Chile, and Germany. Great Britain on paper have by uh, far the quickest national record after Germany. And that German record goes back many, many years, of course. But uh, the Japanese on their day, very, very disciplined when it comes to carrying the baton around. And Botswana, well, we'll have to wait and see. So let's have a look at these athletes. There's Nadina Gonska of Germany. She will hand over to Corinna Schwab, Karolina Palic, Ruth Sophia Spellmeyer Preuss. With Chile inside them, 31 year old Stephanie Saavedra. Is their lead-off athlete only a 53.8 athlete, but nonetheless will give 101% here. I'm sure. Ama Pipi of uh, Great Britain goes in lane five. The lead-off athlete for them ran the third leg for uh, Great Britain's silver medal-winning quartet at the European Indoors here in Poland in Torun a few weeks ago. Botswana go in at lane four. Now this is an interesting squad. Tomfang Baseli is their lead-off athlete, but Matluku. Morocco and Monchou carries the baton home for them. And then Japan go in lane one. Kobayashi, Matsumoto, Kawata and Shantaku is their quartet. The monthly Monchou, of course, a former world champion for Botswana on the fourth leg for that squad. Interesting to see how she goes here today. Great Britain's squad carries plenty of experience as well. The Japanese... Well, up against it perhaps a little bit here. Their lead-off athlete uh, Kobayashi has a best of 54.6 from three years ago. That British squad with all its experience, PP, Zoe Clark, Jesse Knight and Jessica Turner. Three of the four from that uh, Torren quartet that took the bronze medal. Just the first two go through, remember, from these five teams. So away they go, that distance, but those distances between the runners, of course, uh, incorporate a third bend. So it's always a little harder to judge how well the athletes are going on the first leg. But Great Britain's aim up, Pippi, looks pretty good. Already closing on Saavedra of Chile and indeed on Gonska of Germany, I would say. This looks like a fabulous leg from Pippi. Baseli of Botswana's got a bit of work to do yet, although she's going pretty well compared with Chile and Germany. Got Great Britain lead, certainly at the moment. Japan some way back on the inside to extreme left of picture. But the German is holding her form well here, Nadina Gonska, as they come to the changeover. Great Britain have a marginal lead. Yeah, we can just see Pippi there, just manages to get the baton to Zoe Clark, just ahead of the German squad. Zoe Clark had such a breakthrough from 2017 onwards. Really went from a young junior athlete to, you know, a consistent performer in the Great Britain team. And they're extending the lead at the moment. But Swab from Germany is closing in. She'll take the inside shorter route now at 200 metres. Maybe the lead of around about five metres. Well, Japan's first leg runner closed really well, Kobayashi, because they're right back in the mix now in third place, although these two teams, Great Britain and Germany, have a lead of, what, about 15, 17 metres on the trio behind. Zoe Clark here running really strongly down the home straight, as you would expect, holding her form well, and that gap back to the Japanese holding at about 15 metres at the moment, but not much between Great Britain and Germany as uh, Jesse Knight heads out on this third leg for Britain, ahead of Germany's Palic. Yeah, Jesse Knight, another athlete who's really improved over the last few years, 400-metre hurdler. She had a big win indoors in 2019. 
And here she goes. She was part of the European indoor medal winning squad in Tehran just a couple of months ago. They're extending the lead there, probably 10 meters now from the German squad. Japanese squad still going well. They've got a dominant position now in third place, but it's all about Great Britain and Germany as we come into the final 100 meters of this third leg. Well, Great Britain still in the lead, and the gap has grown enormously. There's the qualifying line. Behind the German athlete, you can see that white box moving down the home straight, which we superimposed, and that shows you the line that the third place team needs to get in front of to get one of the two non-automatic qualifying spots. So it looks like we may get only the first two teams from this one because there was quite some gap between that qualifying line moving down the home straight a few seconds ago ahead of the Japanese in third, sp third spot. Botswana with Moncho on this final leg down the back straight. She, of course, is closing and will go past Shintaku of Japan. There's that uh, particular pass. She's very smooth and powerful. Is our monthly Moncho of Botswana. But the gap through to the Germans is 30, 40 metres and surely insurmountable. It's Great Britain's uh, Jessica Turner now, semi-finalist, better known as a 400 metre hurdler, as coming down the home straight, semi-finalist in the World Championships back in 2019. Eases across the line here from Germany. They go through OK, Great Britain and Germany. Botswana a long way back and I fear will not make it. No, it's interesting, isn't it, that all the times of the winning heats were all pretty similar, 3.27 and 3.28. Um, it looks like Italy from the first heat will make it through and France from heat two. Well, the Germans are pleased with themselves, aren't they? That's a good time, 3.29.73. And yeah, confirmation there that Botswana was some four seconds away from making that final. Too much to make up, no matter what standard of athlete you are but uh yeah all smiles for the for the british athletes qualification was relatively easy and in fact jenny just looking at the first eight teams uh, as you said quite rightly it was uh, italy and france who will go through as the two non-automatic qualifiers but the gap behind france to the ninth best team switzerland was absolutely massive it was over four seconds there was a very clear delineation between the top eight in those three heats and the rest great images are they that we're getting i think it's just such a good opportunity to actually see the physicality of some of these athletes been working hard of course during lockdown but uh yeah the german athlete she was in well qualification place but uh she took it all the way down to the line Jessica Turner there, Zoe Clark, Amma Pippi, Jesse Knight. Yeah, plenty of experience in that uh, British quartet. And I'm sure more good running to come. The Japanese, well, they finished in 12th overall with 335.26. Of course, are they hoping desperately that these next 12 and a half weeks, because that's what it is through to the Tokyo Olympic Games. They will be hoping desperately that uh, pandemic conditions globally, but particularly back in Japan, improve dramatically. Japan and failing to qualify, though, unfortunately, as I say, there are the teams that have made it through Cuba, Poland, Belgium, Netherlands, Great Britain and Germany, all by right, with Italy and France uh, winning themselves a life through to the final by dint of being non-automatic qualifiers. Just outside 3.30, those uh, two teams at the bottom.